Hi. Never uh, documented a build before on video, so that'd be cool to do this one. It's going to be probably more complex builds ever done. I uh, look forward to showing you what I have in store and then uh, the build process over the next year. But before, kind of background, uh, I recently sold a 1200 horsepower Porsche 997 911 that I built. Amazing car in every way. Uh, made 900 plus on stock motor. Uh, drove for three years. Last half of that on built motor. Uh, 35 pounds of boost, super reliable, got me where I needed to go. Um, just felt it was time for a new project, but I kind of fell in love uh, with Porsche, uh, the way it feels, the the soul behind the car. Um, so I decided I'm going to do another uh, Porsche build. Uh, besides, this time it's going to be a, a lot bigger one, uh, more power, and a lot more work. So looking forward to showing you that. What is it? It's a Cayman. Some might say it's a bit of a downgrade from the 911. But being mid-engine gives you kind of a cool opportunity to do some unique stuff. Got lots of room back here. Uh, so the plan is LS1, two big-ass turbos, and a uh, transaxle out of a Lamborghini Gallardo. Uh, I'm going to put in the back of this thing. The car's really pretty small. That's one of the things I like about it. It's lightweight. Uh, Rear-wheel drive might be a bit of a challenge putting down the power, but... Uh, with kind of current generation ECUs, traction control, boost control, boost by mile an hour, boost by RPM. It's actually not too tough to make the car uh, hook up pretty good, even rear-wheel drive. Probably end up doing a uh, wide body. Tires are pretty narrow. I think you get about a 295 in the back of this thing, but that's not going to be anywhere near enough. So wide body front and rear, uh, probably new, new tail lights. They make some LEDs look pretty cool. Uh, GT3. Rear hatch, I want to go to that with the wing on it. Uh, gonna need the downforce. I plan on tracking this car. Um, GT3 front end, this front end's really dated. Uh, never really liked these cars actually when they were new. Uh, just kind of bland compared to a 911, but I think with GT3 front end, uh, GT3 wing, you know, widen the car a little bit, wider wheels. I'm thinking, uh, I haven't finalized color, obviously. I've got probably a year before I paint the thing, but I'd really like to do uh, maybe Mexico blue, something homage to Porsche, but stands out a bit more than traditional black or white or red or something like that. Um, what else? So, MA needs a 3.4 liter Cayman S motor. I have an 07, got one for sale. Uh, this car actually has, the motor one is about 200 miles on The guy actually just rebuilt it. Uh, blew up the track and he rebuilt it with ARP rod bolts and Rig and Nick sealed the cylinders, and so it's fresh, new bearings. I'm um, gonna go to a good home, I'm sure, get tracked a whole bunch, and somebody will enjoy it. Uh, but I'm gonna, I don't know, some might say wreck the Porsche by putting an LS motor in it, but it's gonna haul ass, that's for sure. Uh, probably gonna end up firewalling off this whole back area. So I'll put a kind of a roll hoop, uh, starting over in the corner there, running around the top. Uh, use Nomex panel for firewall, and keep it lightweight, and then do a Lexan window kind of like on a Ford GT uh, between the seats so I can still see out the back window and then the glass will actually become kind of the engine bonnet like on a Lamborghini where you can see the motor. All this area back here will be basically engine bay uh, and the reason for that you can actually can fit it under the cover. This is nothing I guess I should say this that I'm not the first one to do this. Uh, other people have done LS swaps. There's a Coyote swap uh, so it's not terribly unique although there's probably five of them or something running. Um, but I want to put the twin turbos and I plan to track the car. I'm gonna need a lot of room for cooling. Uh, people underestimate how much it takes to cool a turbo motor uh, when you're road racing, and especially a big V8, big power. I want to make 1400 or so on kill and like 700 at the wheels uh, on, on kind of low booster or road course duty. But even 700 is really hard to cool. So I'm hoping that with all the extra room back here, by this all being part of the engine bay, uh, plenty of room for. Uh, heat exchangers for the turbos. I'll do air water probably, considering everything's in the back. Um, need oil coolers, obviously. Um, you know, I have triple radiators up front. I'm planning on trying to use these ducts if I can get enough air through them. Uh, they're surely not meant for it. I think uh, the factory, they're just used for doing uh, air intake on the motor. But I'm gonna try to use them to cool, do the air to water, the heat exchangers for the intercooler, but we'll see. Gotta kind of play with it and see what I can make do. Once I have the wide body, kind of like on a Porsche Turbo, I should be able to get uh, a little more area, cross sectional area there to get more airflow through, but we'll see. Um, it'd be really cool if I could keep and maybe just section off 
this storage area here and actually keep the engine cover flush so that I don't have to lose the whole rear area. I don't have to have that plexiglass or Lexan window in the back, but I don't really care. I mean, at the end of the day, I want everything packaged nicely. I want it easy to work on. It's got to be reliable, and temperature is a huge part of being reliable. Um, so that's kind of the, the game plan. Uh, car isn't too bad. I mean, I got a really good deal on it considering the motor's fresh. I hope it'll sell for a decent amount pretty quick, but uh, pretty basic uh, interior. Unfortunately, it smells like someone smoked in it, but I'm going to go to new seats, uh, re have the dash wrapped in leather, have the center console rewrapped. Um, you know, all the plastic pieces that are scratched up, fixed, doors redone like I did on my 911 uh, with Alcantara. It looks a lot nicer and it's just not that expensive if you do it yourself. Um, one of the tricks is getting the motor in is obviously it's, uh, let me get back here a little bit. It's got two more cylinders. And as you can see, the seat backs are all the way against the firewall. And I'm, I wish the seat would be farther back, quite frankly, I'm 6'2". So some of the guys that have done swaps have moved the firewall forward by a couple inches. And quite frankly, I just don't, I just don't have the room uh, to do that. So what I may end up doing is uh, moving the pedal box forward if I have to, which I really don't want to do, because uh, that's moving the whole front kind of section of the car behind the wheel forward. I want to run wider tires, so that's going to make that more difficult, so on and so forth. Um, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, the, Graziano, the Graziano transaxle out of the Gardo is actually the diff is positioned uh, a little bit closer to the uh, center line of the motor. So I can actually move the motor back compared to some other swaps that have used the factory stuff. Uh, so we'll see if that, that helps me out. Um, but anyway, I'm hoping to get it back with the far where it is. And if I have to move it forward, maybe go to like a tillet carbon seat or something really thin uh, that lets me still move the seat back because I gotta be comfortable. Um, I don't want any, um, I don't want anything to make me not want to drive this car every day. I don't want want to make any compromises. I intend to have air conditioning and power steering, and um, you know I want I want to be able to hand the keys to a valet and him just park it. You know, not tell him five things it's not going to work right or it's going to stall or um, you know seat doesn't move or whatever. Uh, the most fun cars I've owned the last few years are the ones that do everything. Um, you know, my 911 made 1,200 horsepower, so the flywheel and and. You could still toss the keys to anybody that could drive it. I mean, it just was like driving a car until you got in the booth. So, anyway, that's kind of an overview of what I'm going to be up to. Um, keep uh, tabs on my Instagram. I'll be posting lots of pictures, a lot more than I've done in the last few years in my builds. I'm hoping to document this one a lot better than I have. I know a lot of people have asked for that. And then uh, make sure you subscribe. Don't know how often of a cadence I'll be doing these videos. Obviously, I don't want to just do a video of me tightening and loosening bolts or cutting a hole in the chassis or something, but. I'll try to document the kind of the cool stages and maybe stop and spend 20 minutes just kind of walking through some of the stuff that I'm working on. Um, anyway, so I'm going to get this thing started, uh, rip this thing out, uh, and then somehow I'm going to fit a couple of intercoolers, big ass engine, two big ass turbos, and a bunch of cooling stuff, along with a transaxle that supposedly, according to my measurements, is almost going to poke out of the rear bumper. So it literally where those exhaust tips are, I think is about where the, the transaxle is going to end. So let's see how that works out. Anyway, make sure you subscribe. Uh, hopefully show you guys some cool stuff as we build this. And when it's done, I can guarantee uh, there'll be some cool videos of me beating the hell out of the car. So see you guys soon.